Today we want to spend a little bit of time just talking about some nuances inside of the different types of business that we might run. So Joy, I'd love you just to give us some insight as we're business owners and, and we have a product-based business versus perhaps a service-based business. There are some real differences in, in tax implications depending on what we do. Talk us through some of those. Yes, there are some differences. So let's first start with product-based businesses. It used to be that uh, when I bought inventory, because I'm a product-based mm -hmm. business, right? So it's a, essentially a retail business. I'm gonna buy or manufacture something, a widget that we all, that's an accounting term that we love yeah. using, right? A widget, and then I'm gonna sell it for a profit, and that's kind of my business structure. So when I go out and I buy inventory, under the old rules, I would have to shelf that inventory. So let's say I go put it out in the warehouse, and there it would sit. It would also sit on my balance sheet, which means I can't expense it until I actually sell it. Mm. And the problem with that is that it doesn't really tie to the way small businesses use their cash, right? So I'm gonna go outlay all this cash, buy all this product, I don't get to expense it, yeah. I don't have the cash, it's gonna sit there until I actually sell it, and that may take, you know, whatever your turn is, number of days, months, you know, however long that is, uh, and then I get to expense it. So the cash matchup for small businesses was, wasn't the best. It was, a challenge it times, was extremely right? challenging because you may buy a bunch of inventory, let's say mm -hmm. if it happens at the end of the year, and then I don't get to sell it till sometime next year, and that puts me in a cash crunch, and then I go to do my taxes, and I owe a bunch of uh, tax based on all this income that I made, but I don't have the cash, yeah. right? So it was pretty difficult. Under the new rules, they changed that. They tried to match up how small businesses spend their cash on, for products and inventory with your ability to expense it. Mm. And they've capped it, it's rough, you know, it's in the millions, and, and most small businesses would fall under that scenario. So if I go out and I buy inventory now, what I can do is I can expense it as soon as I buy it. So even if it's December 15th? So even if it's December 15th. And so what happens is, is inventory is now used as a planning tool, mm. where it wasn't in the past. Usually people would buy inventory, you get to that fourth quarter and, and you just put the brakes. Yeah. No more cash into inventory. Now what's happening is you're getting towards the end of the year and you're looking at, hey, where's my, where's my income, right? I got a lot this year. I may want to buy a bunch of inventory so I can expense it off and then I'll sell it through next year and then I'll get all that cash and then I can pay my tax. So we're using inventory now as a, as a tax planning tool where in the past we weren't. Yeah. Conversely with service-based businesses, okay? So there are some new things for service-based businesses which are actually pretty cool as well. We don't have products, service, is just like it sounds. It's me it's producing are, something, right? yeah. it's who I am. Uh, for example, an accountant, yeah. right? I'm a CPA, I can go out and I do tax returns and different things and I can make money that way. Um, what's happening now is we have this earned income business deduction for service-based people. So that allows me to take 20% of my taxable income and reduce it off the top and I'm only paying tax on 80%. The key in this is whether or not um, I guess the type of service that I'm in. So they put restrictions on people like me. Why? I mean, I don't know, but professionals, let's, yeah. let's term them professionals. So professionals have these kind of limitations of what they can take depending on the, t uh, the amount of money that they make and whether they have wages and assets and all these kinds of different things. You just leave that computation to people like me. Yeah. But just know, hey, if I'm in the service industry, I may be able to deduct 20% of my income and only pay tax on 80%. So those, those are a couple of the new changes that have happened with this recent tax code with service and products-based businesses. And, you know, I, th I think w when you look at that too, and we don't need to get into all the nitty gritty, but th there are some other stipulations along there. What type of business structure do you have? Different things. Right. So, so again, there's some real advantages that I need to sit down and have a conversation with to make sure that I am going to qualify for right. those things, it's right? Always about, it's always about the right vehicle. Yeah. What's the type of vehicle I'm using? And there are cases for each structure, LLCs, partnerships, S-Corps, C-Corps, and it really depends on what it is that you're doing and the goals that you have for your business that puts you in the proper structure. So I, I think this leads to another little interesting nuance here to business, and, and, and that's depreciation. Uh, there's, there's certain expenses or, or, or things that we can depreciate over time. I want you to talk about that for a minute. And the reason I bring it up here is is I have seen people often question, hey, is my inventory something I can depreciate? I'm taking that expense and they almost seem to think, is there a way I can double dip here, right? So talk through maybe how inventory fits in, which I think is pretty straightforward, 
but also some of these other depreciable assets that I can take over time as well. You're correct. We do not depreciate inventory. Inventory is an expense. The things we depreciate are, think of them as furniture and fixtures, equipment, buildings, for example, cars or automobiles. So those are the types of assets that we depreciate. And the nice thing about depreciation is I have some leeway. There are some things I can do with, the, to, with depreciation from accelerating it, taking it all yeah. right now, or kind of using it as a planning tool again. Automobiles are some of my, are some of the greatest things to use as a planning tool yeah. around depreciation that uh, I see just lots of my tax clients take advantage of it. Now, when we talk a little bit about depreciation, I think it would be fair to make sure that we, we make sure that everybody understands as great as depreciation is along the way, and it is great, that I need to be aware of some things down the road that can come back to haunt me right. if I'm not aware of them. Talk to us a little bit about some of those tax ramifications of depreciating things down the road. Okay, so probably the biggest one are buildings. Because we buy a building, it tends to be an appreciable asset. Not always, but let's say in general, it's an appreciable asset. So at some point, I'm gonna wanna sell it and cash out, right? That's kind of the mentality. Yeah. I'm gonna buy this building for 300 grand. I'm gonna run my business in it. 10 years from now, it's gonna be worth 400 grand. It's gonna be part of my retirement. I'm gonna cash out and make $100,000. The issue with buildings is that as I get this great benefit year after year after year of depreciation, when I sell it, all that depreciation gets recaptured and there is probably gonna be a tax consequence that I have. So you just have to be aware of it so I can plan for it. Yeah. I mean, part of taxes is just planning for it, not getting you know, surprised by something that I'm unaware of. So if I know as I'm depreciating this building when I sell it, there's some recapture, then I can plan for it as part of my selling process to minimize my tax during that event. So we don't need to be afraid of depreciation. No, don't be afraid right, of it. Right? It's, a, it's no. a tremendous tool as we help manage what we're paying right. to the government. But we do need to make sure that we understand what's going on and how that's going to impact us down the road right. so we don't end up in a situation where Correct. So I would always suggest, hey, if I think about selling a depreciable asset like a building, sit down with a CPA, someone like me, prior to selling it so you can strategize around the best ways to limit the amount of tax that I would have to pay. Because there are some other tools that maybe another time there we'll are, talk about exactly right. that, that help us navigate that, exactly right? Exactly right. We know how important it is for you to keep your business running smoothly. Here at Tax Hive, we can help with all of your tax and business service needs so you can focus in on what it is that you do best. Our entire team of experts is standing by ready to help out. Schedule a strategy session with one of our experts today.